is Monday, May the 8th, 2017, and this is your Barbados Today Evening Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, a close-knit St. Peter community is now living in fear following a late-night shooting which has left one man injured. 40-year-old Kirk Diana Springer, who was liming in the area of Bailey's Road, the Wim St. Peter, with another man, sustained a gunshot wound to his hand after they were approached by two men asking for money. An elderly resident who asked to be identified only as Rosalind said she has lived in the community all her life and nothing like that had ever happened before. She said members of the community were now shaken up as a result of the shooting. You know my friends like me, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. and talking. And I had just gone in, not long gone in my bag and mm -hmm. leave them there. And then all of a sudden you hear this. And they hear this thing. I don't know. Mm. I don't know where these guns coming from. And the people that holding them is young, young people. Mm -hmm. That's all. It's not like that's all the learning to do. Meanwhile, police are continuing investigations into the shooting death of 30-year-old Sherwin Success of Kingsland Christ Church. Success, who was shot in the upper part of his body yesterday, died later in the night. Minister of Finance Chris Sinclair says though the Barbados economy is definitely not well at the moment, he is yet to see the logic of those clamoring for a government to immediately put it into the hands of the International Monetary Fund. In rejecting out of hand the economic prescription issued last week by the recently dismissed Governor of the Central Bank of Barbados, Dr. Delay Worrell, Sinclair warns that even if the Friendly Stewart administration were to decide to go to the IMF tomorrow, it was unlikely any tangible benefits would be realized from that move within the next six months. Uh, we know the deficit is high. We know that the government is relying overly on the central bank and that that needs to be brought under some serious level of discipline. And that we are going to do, but we have to do that in a responsible fashion. As we didn't get there overnight, and I don't think we're going to be able to unravel it overnight by a single waving of a magic wand or going and doing an IMF program or whatever the case may be. I mean, even if we were to go, even if I was to say, go, let's go to the IMF tomorrow, it takes between six and eight months to negotiate and complete and have approved by the executive board an IMF program. But if you have an immediate problem that needs to be dealt with right now, you can't wait six to eight months negotiating with anybody to get that done. Employers in Barbados appear to be getting frustrated over the time it's taking government to address their concerns regarding the Employment Rights Act. Executive Director of the Barbados Employers Confederation, Tony Walker, says aspects of the act are making the work environment difficult for businesses. Walker is appealing to the government to treat their recommendations on that issue as a top priority. One of the major challenges we have with the act and as with most pieces of legislation, the key th thing that drives the implementation is having your regulations. Without your regulations, the provisions of the Act open themselves to interpretations of all sorts by every party. One of the other issues that we're having with the operation under the Act relates to involvement of legal counsel in matters relating to discipline, which normally would be within the purview of the employer. Speaking this morning at the same media conference to announce the BEC's week of activities, President Margaret Eswick called for greater efficiency within the social partnership mechanism so that issues raised there can be addressed in a timely manner. Institutions like people need to move from infancy to adulthood. And we think that um, there must be a process of making the consultations far more efficient. Mm -hmm. um, there are cordial discussions. The, the action coming out of these discussions cause us some concern, and we need to see some improved efficiency in terms of how issues raised at the social partnership the timeliness with which they are addressed so that we do not spend as much time talking around issues and having these issues come up and we reiterate the matters arising for minutes with very little action coming out of them. A major hypertension screening initiative has been launched in Barbados that could help save lives. 
the May Measurement Month project jointly spearheaded by the Heart and Stroke Foundation and at the University of the West Indies Cafield Campus got off the ground this morning with Foundation President Dr. Kenneth Connell appealing to all food establishments to ditch the assault. Restaurants and food institutions. It might be a good opportunity this month to have a, as we have May Measurement Month, to have a ditch the salt month. What I foresee here is where restaurants and other food establishments would not have table salt on their various restaurant tables for the month of May. It makes it more difficult or more challenging for uh, a patron then to access salt. You actually have to request it or go to the counter. And so my challenge out there is for all the fast food restaurants, all of the slow food restaurants, all of the supermarkets and all of the food uh, establishments make it difficult this month for people to access salt. Remove the salt from the salt shakers from your tables. Project assistant Dr. Raphael Greenwich said some 40 university medical students will help with the screening and blood pressure checks at such pressure points over the next two weeks as the Queen Elizabeth Hospital tomorrow, the UWI on Wednesday, the Heart and Stroke Foundation on Thursday, and the Lantern Mall on Saturday afternoons. The, we're aiming to have the public come to our booth. So with the advertisements, we're aiming to have the students go to try to get persons to come in. Um, so we want the public to come. They will be seated for about 10-15 minutes. Um, they will be asked a quick questionnaire, basically about their health. Um, we're looking at age, we're looking at obviously the gender, um, the ethnicity of the persons, and also looking at some um, biometric data, basically looking at the height and weight of the patients or the participants. Um, from there, they'll have their blood pressure checked at least three times by the medical students, and then they'll be given what their readings are. Um, and we're also aiming to tell them what the readings are and what the readings mean. And then from there, they're also told what should be done from there. So do you need to continue with your current routine? Um, continue doing what you're doing? Do you need to actually make adjustments to your health in terms of your diet, exercise? Or do you need to see healthcare profession, um, professional help within the next two weeks, three weeks, or the next two months? There's regional and international news after this short break. When it comes to your family, what do you dream of? Enjoying the sights of Italy, seeing the Eiffel Tower for the first time, or experiencing the cuisine of Spain? Courts can make your family dream come true. Shop at Courts for a chance to win a dream cruise for a family of four. Spend $999 or over at any court store or online at shopcourts.com. Every $100 gets you a chance to win that cruise to give you more fun time with your family by cruising the Mediterranean, a value of over $20,000. So stop dreaming and start shopping to make your dream come true at Courts, bringing value home. Good morning, Phyllis and Company may help. Oh, certainly one moment, please. Miss Phyllis, yeah. there's a lady on the line from the Nation newspaper who would like to speak with you. The Nation? Wish you could on. Well, they're trying to sell us some ads. Look, don't make me laugh this morning. Ads in the nation? They're real expensive, and for one here, nobody ain't buying them papers no more. Nobody ain't want to steal news. I hear reading Barbados today online for free. So I tell she thanks for calling, but no thanks. We just advertise in Barbados today, families. Tell she is Barbados today. All the way. Okay, I'll pass on the message. Mom, are you still there? Oh, she she does she put down. The Barbados Today News You Can Trust. We are back with news from the region now. Jamaican politician and businessman Peter Sangster, accused of forging the signature of former Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller, had his bail extended when he appeared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Paris court this morning. Sangster's bail was extended for him to reappear in court on June the 5th. 47-year-old Sangster, managing director of the Jamas Communications Limited, is charged with uttering forged documents, forgery and obtaining money by false pretenses. Allegations are that between 2011 and 2013, Sangster solicited and obtained over 1.2 million Barbados dollars from chairman of the company. And on the international scene, Emmanuel Macron took his first step 
as France's president-elect today, but faces a tough task establishing a team that can govern effectively. His party has announced it is changing its name. Ms. Le Pen, his main rival, has also signaled there will be a change to her National Front party. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, or screenplay at supermarkets and at gas stations near you, as well as the Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic evening.